COVID-19 or not, college is coming for your student. Here are three things that you must know to properly prepare financially for the day that your student goes off to college. Number one, what does college cost? Number two, and more importantly, what will college cost you? And lastly, what is financial aid and how do you get it? My name is Monica Felton, and I'm a certified financial planner in Scottsdale, Arizona. And for almost 15 years, I have been helping families save and pay for college so they don't sacrifice their own retirements. You see, I'm hugely passionate about this group of people because this year, 2020, I'll send my oldest daughter off to college. It's a very exciting time, but I will tell you a very expensive time. So helping you understand these foundational questions will lead you to great success. I have prepared an eight minute on demand video that will address these things. Remember, early awareness leads to great success and I wish you only the best. Thank you so much for taking the time to educate yourself on the three fundamental questions of preparing for the financial aspect of college. So we're gonna get right into it. What does college cost? More importantly, what will college cost you? And then lastly, what is financial aid and how do you get it? So there's a term called cost of attendance or sticker price and every school has one. So here in the state of Arizona, our state schools are costing about $30,000 a year. If you leave the state of Arizona to go to a public school or you're looking at one of those smaller private schools, now we're upwards of about $65,000. And if you're interested in those Ivy Leagues or very elite and prestigious schools, yes, it's almost $80,000 per year. Now, these costs are shocking high. And even with COVID-19, we're not seeing any reduction. Now, historically, the inflation rate of college has been 5%. So who knows what the future holds, but I almost can guarantee they won't be reducing the cost of college. So this is why all my families begin to say, oh my goodness, where am I gonna find some financial aid? So let's get clarity and understand what financial aid really is. Well, there's two types of financial aid. There's need-based financial aid, and need is based on mom and dad's economics. There's also merit-based financial aid, and merit is based on your students' academics. Now, just a small point on merit. We don't know the pool of students that your child will be competing against when the time comes for merit-based financial aid. So this is when it's very wise to apply at multiple schools to see if there are bigger merit awards that your student can receive. Now you must understand very early in this process that highly prestigious schools like Stanford, like NYU, uh, like uh, Forda, they do not give any merit awards. So, you will now have to switch over to need-based financial aid, which is based on your parents' economics. So the remainder of this financial aid will be around need-based financial aid to help families really understand what they're expected to pay. So how you get need-based financial aid filled is you have to know something called your EFC or your expected family contribution. This is the amount of money that the government says you can afford to pay per year to educate one child. And they derive this formula using these statistics. So parents' income, parents' assets, students' income, students' assets, number of kids in college at the same time, parents' age, and number of kids in the household. 
So the baseline expected family contribution formula goes something like this. So first, they're going to look at the parent's contribution. They're going to take 25% of your income. Now, your income is everything that you make, or gross income, or you can take your adjusted gross income and add back in any contributions that you've made to a, a 401k plan, an HSA plan, a pension. They really want to know what that number is. And they're going to multiply that times 25%. Then they're going to look at your assets. And your assets include everything with the exception of money already in a retirement account, like a 401k or an IRA, cash value, life insurance, and annuities. These three assets are excluded from the EFC equation. Now, secondly, they're gonna look at students' contribution. So they're gonna look at students' income, and they're also gonna look at students' assets. Now, student income, if your student works at Starbucks and earns less than $4,500 a year, you will not impact your need-based financial aid. But anything over that could reduce your aid eligibility. Now, they're also gonna look at students' assets. And a student asset is something like a UTMA account or a UGMA account. They're really custodial accounts. A 529 is considered a parent asset and it falls over in this category. So this will give you an idea of what your family is expected to pay. So if you make $100,000 and you have about $100,000 in visible assets, the government is gonna say you can afford to pay almost $30,000 a year in after-tax money to pay for college. So take a big deep breath because hopefully you'll understand after viewing this slide that families are expected to pay for college. In some instances, you can get help your student could get merit money, but we need to understand what you're expected to pay so that you're fully prepared the day that your brilliant child goes off to college. Now, debt. This is very important because what parents need to understand is debt is not one of the factors used to determine your aid eligibility. So that's where working with somebody like me early in the college planning process can be hugely beneficial. Because what we do is we try to close the gap between what the government says you can afford to pay and what you can actually afford to pay. So here's the process. You're going to go on uh, your student's senior year and fill out something called the FAFSA, the Free Application for Federal Student Aid. Once you fill that out, you're going to get a report back. And on that report will be your EFC, or your expected family contribution. Well, once you pick yourself up off the floor, because the number is so high, you're going to get mad. And you're going to say, what? How on earth could they ever expect that I could pay that for college? So this is where working with somebody like me early in the process can be hugely beneficial because what we do is we close the gap between what they say you can pay and what you can actually pay. So in some instances, we can actually reduce your expected family contribution. But really in most cases, what we're doing is getting you much more efficient with the money you already have running through your fingertips. So do you have any high interest debt or bad spending habits? We want to eliminate those prior to you writing your first check for college. So in essence, if we can lower that expected family contribution and improve your overall monthly cash flow, we can then close the gap and make college much more affordable. So how is need determined? Well, what they're gonna do is they're gonna take that cost of attendance or the sticker price, and remember every school has one, 
they'll subtract out your EFC or that expected family contribution. And that's going to determine how much help you can get or your need. Now, how you get that need filled, again, is something called the FAFSA, the Free Application for Federal Student Aid. Now, there's no cost to complete this form, and there's millions that are filled out annually. Now, you can fill out the FAFSA October 1st of your student's senior year. Now, what's interesting is the financial information they're going to use for this form is actually a year prior. We call this terminology prior prior. Now, there's a very high audit rate on the FAFSA, and that doesn't mean the IRS audits you. It means that the school in which your student is interested in going, they will uh, audit the, the records or, or the content that you've put into the FAFSA. Now, historically, we've had a very high error rate. Um, so again, I don't think the FAFSA is difficult to fill out. It's just important to understand what information goes where. So here's the data and the tax returns that are required. Again, the FAFSA you fill out October 1st of your student senior year. And the financial data that you're looking at is prior prior. So if your student is going to school in 2022, you can fill out the FAFSA in 2021, and they're going to be using this year's tax returns. So my daughter is a junior this year, so I am in my baseline year, and they will use this year's tax returns to determine four years of financial aid. Now, you will have to fill out the FAFSA every year that your student's in college, but remember, each time you fill it out, they're using data from two years prior. Now, this is a very, very important point because colleges are who ultimately meet your need and they can do so in three different ways. They can do it with gift money. This is our favorite. It's called tuition reduction, scholarships. It's money that we don't have to pay back. The second is what we call self-help. That's just really a sexy word for loans, but you still have to pay that back. And then lastly is GAP. The college does not have to help you if they're not interested in bringing your student to their college. Remember, college is a business. They are looking for the smartest kids possible whose parents can pay the most amount of money possible. But it is truly their decision on how they want to help you. So if there's any students listening today, it's study hard and get good grades because grades matter and will be a determining factor of how much financial aid, merit aid, a student will receive. Now, if you want to look at historical award packages of the schools that your student is interested in, there are numerous resources that you can check out. CollegeBoard.org is a wonderful web website representing over 4,000 four-year universities. So you can find out how generous they've been, um, how much need they fill, how much uh, low or excuse me debt students get into. So just a wealth of knowledge at College Board. But there's also something called the FAFSA Forecaster and or the net price calculator and that is available on every school's website and will help you again understand what you're going to be expected to pay so i highly recommend you uncover your efc early in the process the sooner the better because the more you understand about what you're expected to pay the better planning you and your college counselor can do to ensure that you have the best possible college experience for your student. So I hope this helps answer those foundational questions of what college costs, how much you're going to be expected to pay, and what is financial aid, how do you get it, and what it truly is. Thank you so much.
So now you have the answers to the three foundational questions on how to prepare financially for college. So if you now realize that you will be expected to pay something for college and you want some strategies and solutions on how to better save and pay for college so you don't sacrifice your retirement, let's set up a time to talk. I offer a 15 minute introductory call where we can get to know each other and we can see if I can help. I hope you take advantage of this opportunity. Thank you so much. Have a great day.